Hey guys, John from Gutenberg Research here, and in this video I'm going to take you through our Alphabet Inc. earnings model ahead of this fourth quarter release and show you how we've incorporated some of the guidance from management's um, last uh, conference call into our model and how we've calibrated that model to meet consensus estimates so you can plug in your own assumptions and see what the impact is on EPS and share price. So I've got the transcript open here. It's available from the uh, Alphabet Investor Relations page. You can click on this transcript here. I've already downloaded it and highlighted a couple of things that I think are pretty important to include in your model. So if you scroll down to page four, that's where management starts talking about their guidance for the next couple of quarters. And they don't really give quantitative metrics the way other companies do. Uh, so you kind of have to read between the lines and uh, try to incorporate the trends into your estimates for the next couple of quarters. So I'm going to skip down to where they start talking about the traffic acquisition costs. And traffic acquisition costs are actually very important. Uh, the model is very sensitive to changes in tax rates as a percentage of revenue. And the way you think about it is they've got two Google segments. They've got the Google Sites and the Network Sites. Um, both of those segments within Google um, have different tack rates as a percentage of revenue. And so any kind of uh, change in the mix between those two segments will actually have a pretty big impact on overall earnings. So management gives a little bit of details here. So um, they talk about the shift to mobile in the third quarter. And that was the largest driver of the increase in site tax. So that's Google Websites tax as a percentage of revenue. And they expect that to continue into the future. And then they also talk about the network tax as a percentage of network advertising revenue. And they also expect that to be higher. So I'm going to show you how we incorporate that into our model. And of course, if you have higher tax rates, it's going to result in a lower gross margin. And they actually, actually like reiterate that point later on in the conference call. Uh, let's see. It's talking about marketing expenses here on page 11. So we do expect ongoing gross margin pressure from higher TAC associated with mobile search and programmatic. So again, they kind of highlight those two key points. And those are the two key points that are um, influencing revenue as well. So for the sites, you have uh, mobile search uh, strength, and then you also have strength in YouTube as well. And then for the network sites, you have strength in the programmatic advertising adoption. So those are two things and we're going to switch over to the model in a second and I'm going to show you how I've incorporated those items but there's one other thing here that's pretty important they talk about marketing expense as a percentage of revenue and they kind of highlight the fact that the back half of the year tends to have higher marketing expenses a percentage of revenue um, and they don't really say they say that they're expecting it to be higher in the fourth quarter it's kind of hard to see if that was uh, quarter over quarter or year over year and one analyst actually later in the conversation did bring that point up. And the answer to his question, um, whether it's quarter over quarter or year over year, is, is also a little ambiguous. But it, they're kind of implying that it's both higher on a quarter over quarter basis and a year over year basis. So I think those are the key points to take away from the last conference call. So let's go to our earnings model, and you can see how I, how I incorporated those items. So if you'd like to download this model, it's available for free on our website, gutenbergresearch.com. You click on the Models tab, go to Alphabet, and uh, you can just download it by clicking this icon here. And I'll just give you a quick overview of how this earnings model works. So first I want to freeze the pane so it makes it a little bit easier to see. And I'll freeze it there so you can see the valuation for each of the two classes of shares. So the top section is the income statement. And you can see we've shaded the historic columns in dark gray. And then the forecast periods are shaded in light gray. And they have a little E next to the quarter. So you know that those are basically implying our estimates for the future periods. And below the income statement, we have our segment details. Whoops, I'm just going to collapse the allocation per share, uh, per class. Uh, so we have the segment details. We have Google website segment. We have the Google network member sites segment, and then the Google other, and all of that is part of the, the overall Google segment here. And then below that, we have the other bets segment, which is not a real large contributor of earnings at this point. Those are just the, um, the moonshot type of things that are really just expense drivers at this point. And then they had some old reporting, which I will hide. We have a breakdown of our traffic acquisition costs and other costs of revenue. Below that, we have the operating expense ratios and gross margin and operating margin on a gap and non-gap basis. 
And then we have a breakdown of our non-GAAP adjustments, uh, which is primarily stock-based compensation. And you can see in the fourth quarter, we actually have that coming down. Don't forget they have the equity refresh in the third quarter. So we wouldn't expect that to be as high a percentage of revenue as what we saw last quarter. So we've incorporated that in here. And then we have a quick breakdown of the net cash per share. Below that, we have the valuation of both the Class A and Class C shares. And we just do this based on a um, uh, price earnings multiple using the next 12 month consensus EPS estimates. And then we allocate um, the adjusted cash per share. So Class A and Class C. And we have calibrated it to meet the valuation that we're seeing ahead of this release. And the reason we do that is because we can leave these multiples constant after the, after the new press release comes out. We can update the December quarter, update the uh, full year 2017 based on the new guidance that management provides if they do give any guidance. And then we'll instantly see on the day of the release what the impact on share price is. That way we can gauge whether or not the price move in after hours makes sense after the release. Um, so let's scroll back up. And I'm going to go through those those few items. So one thing to think about is the mix between Google websites and network member websites. Remember, we said the traffic acquisition cost as a percentage of advertising revenue from both of those segments is quite different. So your allocation of total revenue between those segments is going to be pretty important for the overall earnings estimate. And you can see that with our growth rates that we've applied to those two segments, we were able to get back to the consensus revenue, top line revenue estimates, and that is on a gross of TAC basis. This is another important thing to remember too, is that revenue here is stated gross of TAC. A lot of times um, after the press release, we'll see articles come out where they um, some, uh, some writer will compare the uh, gross of TAC revenue results to a net of TAC revenue uh, consensus estimate. And you can see they're quite different, obviously, because one doesn't include TAC. And so they'll say something along the lines of, uh, Google you know, crushed the estimate of uh, $20 billion with revenue of $25 billion, which is, you know, you're comparing apples and oranges at this point. So just watch for that in some of those articles. It seems that people don't really understand fully how, um, how TAC is reported. So, um, so yeah, so we were able to get back to the consensus revenue estimate. And now let's scroll down to the TAC here. So remember, we, we're expecting to see TAC for Google network members and distribution partners increasing over time. And that is driven by the increase in mobile search and programmatic advertising revenue, um, or programmat programmatic advertisements. Um, so in the third quarter of this year, we saw TAC to network revenue, ad revenue of 70.3%. We have that increasing to 70.8% in the fourth quarter. And then we have it steadily increasing through 2017. And we have a similar trend in distribution partner TAC. So we've got going from 9.7% in the third quarter to 10% in the fourth quarter, and then steadily increasing through 2017. So remember that comment uh, that management gave about gross margin. So you can see uh, that we have gross margin coming down on both a quarter over quarter and year over year basis in the fourth quarter to 60.9%, which is well below the fourth quarter of last year. And then we have gross margin improving slightly uh, through 2017, but we do have it decreasing on a quarter over quarter basis. So you see the first quarter of 2017, we have it coming down 10 basis points, so higher than the fourth quarter of this year. Um, and then in the second quarter, we have it coming down 20 basis points from the second quarter of last year. So we've incorporated our TAC guidance. We've incorporated our gross margin guidance. Now, there was the other item that we have in there is the marketing expense. So since they've released the Pixel phone in the fourth quarter, and they also have Google Home and some other hardware products, they're expecting the marketing cost as a percentage of revenue to increase in the fourth quarter. And that's, again, on a year-over-year -year basis and a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis. So you can see here in the third quarter of last year, sales and marketing expense as a percentage of revenue was 11.4%. So we had that increasing quite a bit in the fourth quarter to 12.9%. And that is 30 basis points higher than last year and well ahead of the estimate of this year. And we have it remaining a little bit high throughout 2017 because the fact is now they do have products and they're going to have to market those products. So. Um, so once we've incorporated all of those items, scroll back up to the bottom of the income statement, 
you can see that we have reached the consensus EPS estimates for the next 12 months. Um, so we are ready for the fourth quarter results. So definitely join us. So I'll, I'll fill in these results for the fourth quarter. Any additional guidance I'll put in here and we'll see what the impact on EPS and share valuation is. And if you'd like to download this model and put in your own assumptions, you can do that. And you can also submit the model, resubmit it to us, and we will post it on our website with a summary of why you changed what you changed. So be sure to check back after the release. Thanks for watching and good luck with the rest of earnings season.